But David, you've been looking at the future in different ways for a big part of your life. Put this idea of uh, longevity into perspective for that viewer and, and tell us how biotech is an example, nanotechnology, and then of course AI, which seems to be everywhere right now, how these things are likely to come together. So for many years in my career, I was interested in reprogramming our silicon, our computers, our smartphones, new versions of the operating system, new applications. But I realized that something even bigger was coming, and that was reprogramming our biology. Not taking the biology that evolution had given us, but modifying it in various ways. Changing the genetic code, changing the so-called epigenetics, which is what happens as a result of environment on top of our genes, reprogramming ourselves in many ways. And the second thing you mentioned was nanotech. Now, nano means incredibly small. It's a thousand times smaller than micro, which is a thousand times smaller than milli. And what we can look forward to is tiny, intelligent little probes or nanobots, which in due course will be able to go into our bodies and tidy up in a very precise way the damage that has accumulated in aging. We've already benefited from microsurgery. Once upon a time, if there was an operation, we were cut wide open. Now surgeons can operate with much smaller, more precise cuts. But in the future, there won't be any cuts at all. And that's one way in which we can undo the damage that we've accumulated in aging and become much younger, much healthier. Well, this idea of having no cuts at all will appeal to a lot of people because a lot of people obviously resist having uh, surgery for reasons that we know with uh, not only expense, but the ability to come back from that surgery. Now, Jose, one of the things that, that you mentioned so much is the idea of freedom and liberty through Liberty International, you were working with, of course, but particularly freedom and liberty to make sure that the scientific community can do its work. And yet, don't we also need to be careful because, you know, a lot of people would say, well, you know, we've had death literally for as long as we know history. Why would it be different now? Well, many things are different now. For example, until uh, 1961, no human stepped on the moon. And now, finally, humans have been to the moon, and soon we will also be stepping on planet Mars and beyond. And that was impossible until relatively recently. Uh, the same with uh, curing diseases. We have been curing more and more diseases, stopping the bad effects of um, biological damage. And now I think we are uh, very close, about 20 years away from stopping aging and reversing aging, which has been the biggest dream of humanity since we know of. Since the beginning of history, humans were looking for immortality. And finally, now we are very close to make this a reality. Again, it is coming from a dream into science reality. In fact, many science fiction authors talk about uh, immortality, and now science fiction is becoming science reality.